Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson on probability. This lesson is aimed at people studying functional skills at level 1 and 2. I'm sure you know something about probability already. It's used in lots of different areas of life as I've tried to show in these pictures. So it's used in games. Most games have some element of chance in them and you can work out your chance using probability. Gambling involves probability, so if you play something like roulette or cards or dice, or if you gamble on the slot machines, all of these things involve probability. The weather forecast here has worked out the chance of rain. It looks like it's very likely to rain um, on this Christmas Eve. So if you have a weather app, it might say the probability of rain is 60% in this particular hour. And then on the left hand side, someone's filling in a life insurance document. So life insurance is when someone pays something probably every month. And if unfortunately they die, then their partner will be given a lump sum on the event of their death. So it's a way of making sure that when you die your mom, your partner is cared for. That's called life insurance. But obviously there's lots of other insurances. So young people often think about car insurance. And of course your chance of a car accident when you're young is greater than someone who's a little bit more older and has more experience of driving. So that's why car insurance for young people is much more expensive than car insurance for slightly older people. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to represent the likelihood of something happening on a scale, understand and calculate simple probabilities and know that probabilities always add up to one. Probability just means how likely something is to happen. Mathematicians use a scale for probability that ranges from 0 to 1. 0 means it's impossible, it will never happen. 1 means it's certain, it definitely will happen. And all probabilities lie somewhere on this scale, so they're usually represented by a fraction, although as I've already mentioned, sometimes it's a percentage. So here's a probability scale. It goes from impossible to unlikely, to even chance, to likely, and then certain. So can you think of an event for each of these descriptions? I'll give you a minute to think about it. If you've not thought yet, click pause for a moment while you think. But something that's impossible, so say today's Tuesday, it's impossible that tomorrow is Thursday. Something that's unlikely, uh, I think it's quite unlikely that Sheffield United will win the Premier League this season. It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. An even chance, or well, the obvious one is tossing a head on a coin, because there's two sides on a coin, a head and a tail, unless your coin is like Del Boys in Only Fools, Only Fools and Horses. He had a two-headed coin, didn't he? And then things that are likely. So if it's summer at the moment, maybe it's quite likely that tomorrow will be sunny. And then things that are certain. Uh, let's be morbid. It's certain that on Sunday we are going to die. Nobody lives forever. So death, unfortunately, is a certainty. I hope you thought of some sensible descriptions to match those likelihoods. So let's think about tossing a coin. When you toss a coin, it's either going to be a head or a tail. I've never seen a coin land on its side yet. So there's only one head. The probability of getting head is therefore 1 out of 2. So to write as a fraction, we write 1 over 2, which is a half and that's also called an even chance. We might write it as a decimal, 0.5, or percentage, 
but usually the problem to be right as a whole. If we throw a dice, on a dice there are six sides and each side should be equally likely to come up if it's a fair dice. So what's the probability of throwing a six? Pause the video again while you have a think about it. So the probability of a six is one sixth because there are six different sides on the dice and there's only one six. So the arrow there shows where one sixth is because there could be six different points on the line, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. there. That would be six spaces along the line and each one of them is one sixth. So we'd also say that getting a six from the dice is unlikely. It's nearest the unlikely mark on that line. What's the probability of throwing an even number? Again, pause the video until you've thought of your answer and then start again. So there are three even numbers on the dice, two, four and six. And there are six numbers altogether. So therefore the probability of an even number is three six. Three six cancels down to one half because the numerator and the denominator both divide by three. You don't have threes into three go one, threes into six go two. So three six equals one half. Now here's a very important point to remember. Probabilities always add up to one. If you've considered all the different things that could happen and add up the probabilities, it will add up to one. So if I tell you the chance of it snowing tomorrow is one third, what is the chance that it will not snow? Again, pause the video until you've got an answer. Well, here we go. Probabilities have got to add up to one. And one is the same as three thirds, isn't it? Three thirds take away one third gives you two thirds. So the chance that it will not snow tomorrow is two thirds. If the probability of a pregnant mother having twins is one in 30, what's the probability of not having twins? Again, pause the video until you've got the answer. One take away one thirtieth is the same as 30 thirtieths take away 130. So that makes 29 thirtieths. The chance of not having twins is 29 out of 30 if you're pregnant. If the probability of an 18 year old driver having an accident in his first year of driving is 1 out of 50, what's the probability of him not having an accident? Again, pause the video until you've got your answer. So we've got to take away 1 50th from 1, and um, one whole one is 50 50ths. 50 50ths take away 1 50th is 49 50ths. So an 18 year old has got a 49 out of 50 chance of not having an accident. Lots of probability questions are about playing cards, so it's useful if you know about them. So here are some playing cards. There are 52 cards in a pack, and there are four suits. Each suit has 13 cards in it. So here are all the clubs, 13 clubs. Here are the hearts, here are the diamonds, and these are called spades. And there are some cards with special names, so we don't call this a one, we call it an ace of clubs. That's the king of diamonds, that's the queen of hearts, and that's the jack of spades. So in some games the ace is high, it's like it's more important than the king. In some games the ace is low, so it's counted as the one. If we choose one card at random from the pack, 
What's the probability that it is the nine of diamonds? Pause the video and have a think. There's only one nine of diamonds in the pack and there are 52 cards in the pack. So the probability of the nine of diamonds is one over 52. If we take one card at random from the pack, what is the probability that it's a club? Again, pause the video and have a think. There are 13 clubs and there are 52 cards all together. So the probability of your card being a club is 13 out of 52. But 13 out of 52 cancels down. Both of those numbers divide by 13. 13 is going to 13 once, and 13 is going to 52 four times. So the probability of choosing a club is one quarter. That's pretty obvious if you think about the suits. There are four suits, clubs, hearts, diamonds and spades. So the chance of it being clubs is one quarter. If we take one card at random from a pack, what's the probability that it's a red king? Pause the video and have a think. There are two red kings, and there are 52 cards altogether, so the probability of a king is 2 out of 52. Is that the answer? No, we must remember to cancel fractions down. So because both of these numbers are even, we know they both divide by 2. So 2's into 2 go once, and 2's into 52 go 26 times. So the chance of getting a red king is 1 in 26. Have you seen how to play, play your cards right on the TV? It used to be a very popular show a long time ago. All you have to do with play your cards right is guess if the next card is going to be higher or lower. So in this game, the ace is counted as low, it's like a one. So we've got a king first. What do you think the next card will be, higher or lower? It's lower. And of course, it was much more likely to be lower, wasn't it? It might have been equal to the king. It might have been the king of hearts or the king of spades, but it wouldn't it was impossible for it to be higher so I hope you said lower what about now is the next card going to be higher or lower I might have caught you out it was more likely to be higher so if you're sensible you probably said higher but probability doesn't always work out sometimes the unlikely thing happens and in this case, the unlikely thing has happened, hasn't it? There wasn't much chance of it being lower than three, but it was. What do you think will come next? Will it be higher or lower? You probably said higher, and it was. What about the last one? Is it going to be higher or lower than a jack? You probably said lower, and you were probably right, because there are more cards lower than a jack and higher than a jack. What about roulette? Roulette is a betting game that's very popular in casinos. There's a wheel and the ball spins around the wheel and eventually lands in one of the numbers. And the numbers go from 0 up to 36. So how many numbers is this? Ever so many people get caught out with that question, it's actually 37, because you've got to count the zero. There's 36 numbers and a zero, so that makes 37. The zero is coloured green, and then there's 18 red numbers and 18 black numbers. And the board looks like this, so what you do is you place your chips on a number or one of these spaces on the board. So for instance you might put a one pound chip on the number seven because seven is often people's lucky number isn't it? So what's the probability of seven winning when the ball spins around on the roulette wheel? 
what's the chance that it will come up as a 7? Pause the video until you've got your answer. So there's only one number 7 on the board, isn't there? And there are 37 numbers altogether. So the chance of getting a number 7 is 1 out of 37. If the 7 comes up, you win £35 and your stake, your, your money that you bet, is returned. If you do this 37 times, how many times would you expect to win? Have a think about that and restart the video when you've got an answer. So as the probability of winning is 1 in 37, we would expect to win just once if we play it 37 times. So each time, if we bet £1 every time, we will gamble £37 altogether. And on the one time that we win, we get our £1 chip back and we'd win £35. So that would be £36 altogether. So we gamble £37, we win £36, so that is overall a one pound loss. What's the probability of winning if you bet on red? Have you thought about that? Pause the video till you've got an answer. Did you say a half? If you did I caught you out. You have to remember that the zero is green. There are 18 red numbers and 37 numbers altogether, so the chance of winning if you bet on red is only 18 out of 37. That's a little tiny bit less than a half. What's the probability if you bet on odd? You need to remember here that zero is not counted as odd or even. So pause the video until you've got your answer. It's the same, isn't it? It's 18 out of 37, because there are 18 odd numbers. Say we keep betting £1 on odd for 37 turns. We would expect to win 18 times and lose 19 times. So it's just the same as our previous example. We win £18 and lose £19. So overall, we'd be £1 down. So if you do the calculations for the other ways of betting on the roulette board, you get similar answers. And that's why casinos make so much money and why gambling is not a good idea. In the end, it's the casino that always wins. Sometimes someone will strike it lucky and they might win lots of money, but usually people lose and the casino wins in the long run. And that's just the same for slot machines, or betting on horses, or betting on football matches. Whatever you bet, it's the bookies that win in the long run, because they make sure the odds are in their favour. What should you do next? Well, along this video there are some questions. Have a go at those and see how good you are with your probability. Enjoy! See you soon.